Our Democrats say Republicans trying to flip the script are comparing apples to oranges, but here's Rush Limbaugh's take. If the Republican candidate does not call the FBI after receiving questionable information from foreign sources, then the Republican candidate is automatically suspected as a political criminal, which will then justify an ongoing investigation should this candidate win. Okay, let's talk about it with former national spokesperson for Hillary Clinton's campaign, Josh Schwerin, and Fox News contributor Andrew McCarthy. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Thanks for having us. Okay. Hi, Shannon. Uh, to that point, PolitiFact.com is quoting Karen Greenberg, the director of the Center on National Security at Fordham Law, saying this, um, how pundits defended Trump's ABC interview and why it's misleading. They say working hand in hand, this is Karen Greenberg, with a foreign power for information intended to influence an election is different than hiring a private firm that then hired somebody who had been a former intelligence agent. Everybody does opposition research. The issue here is the foreign government. So, Andy. Fair to make comparisons between what happened with the Clinton campaign and the Steele dossier and what the president was talking about last night. Yeah, of course it's fair to make the comparison. It's also fair to point out that they also took information from Ukraine. They had people who were working with Fusion GPS who were in the Ukrainian government who passed information to them that ended up being leaked and, and got Manafort blown out of Trump's campaign. You know, look, this is what happens in campaigns and part of the reason that it happens is we have a first amendment in this country which means you can't make this sort of thing as a practical matter or a legal matter illegal to do so whether you have a powerful uh, interference in place or impediment in place to stop people from taking information from foreign governments depends on what your political norms are and if people think that this is the sort of thing that shouldn't be done, then they will take it out on the people who do it at the ballot box. But I, I think it's really juvenile to go on and on about this when, number one, both sides do it, and number two, this is the thing that nobody wants to talk about. This government, our government, is the most active government in the world in terms of our intelligence community trying to influence events in other parts of the world. It happens that we are a very consequential country. We have interests all over the world. And we try to influence events hmm. in other countries. I don't know why we would try to create a situation that's going to make it more difficult for our intelligence community to protect okay. America's interest in the world. I just right. do not get that. Let me bring Josh in here. The American Thinker uh, blog under this headline, Trump successfully baits his foes with comments to Stephanopoulos on foreign information on opponents, uh, said this. Uh, the piece says, Trump now has many of his worst enemies on the record about how heinous it was to accept any intelligence from a foreign source. Trump mentioned Norway, Hillary and the DNC. He says paid for dirt from Russia. Josh. So this isn't actually a question of the law, right? Like even when Devin Nunes and the Republican-led Intelligence Committee released their report on Russia, they said that working with Steele through Fusion GPS was legal. And Fox News and Judge Napolitano said it's very clear that it would be a felony if Donald Trump did what he said he is willing to do. The question is, what are we doing to prevent foreign governments from interfering in our next election? We've got Mitch McConnell blocking election protection laws. We've got Donald Trump giving the green light to any country that wants to interfere. This is about the future. It's Ooh, not wait. about the facts. He, did, facts. he made very clear he wasn't talking about interference. He was talking about information. Governments give information for their own purposes. It's so that they can interfere in our election and influence events here for their benefit. They're not doing so it Josh, because they like somebody. So, Josh, what do you make of the here. information that flowed through Michael Steele, or excuse me, Christopher Steele, that a lot of people think was potentially misinformation provided by Russian assets, potentially the Russian government, in order to, through the Steele dossier, then uh, mess with the election? How is that different? Well, first of all, it wasn't illegally obtained, which obtaining it through uh, a foreign government coming and giving you something would be. Um, but it was vetted and investigated, and it wasn't part of the Mueller report at all. And so it doesn't bother me that some, when you do research, some of it ends up being true, some of it ends up being not. That's why you continue to research it. Well, and uh, Andy, I want to bring you in here real quickly because we're almost out of time, but I want to ask about this idea that it would be a felony or against the law because you're saying taking information would not be illegal. People are going to question whether it's ethical, but are you saying it's not illegal? 
I do not think it's illegal. Mueller went through an analysis of this in connection with the, the Trump Tower investigation and trying to put a dollar figure on it and figure out if it could be a thing of value mm -hmm. for purposes of the campaign fund. Give me a break. It's not, it, look, this is, our theory as a society is that good information will beat out bogus information in the arena of ideas. We're not a society that bans information. We're a society that says information has to compete. The well, chair of the FEC tonight said it would be a felony. Well, They're the ones who actually oversee yeah, us. But they, they say all you're, kinds of things. If you're going to monetize things. something. So uh, it's definitely sparking a, a conversation that I think all Americans are very interested in having because we are on the cusp of yet another big election. Uh, Josh and Andy, thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.